It really is a beautiful thing, isn't it? We got all these videos coming out talking about the positive reception, the positives of the game, some of them compelling you to give the game another chance. And you know what? I figured I'd chime in on this. I got things to say. I want to shake up this atmosphere of positive vibes. You know, as in ruin everyone's fun, because like anyone with a negative opinion, I, I don't like fun. I, I can't stand it. I hate it. I want this game to fail. I want it to crash and burn. I want it dead in the ground. If if it refuses to stay down, then I want its future to be cursed indefinitely. Okay, alright, alright. For real though, I like Halo. I wanted Halo Infinite to succeed since the very beginning, and that hasn't changed unless they do something really scummy, which I don't even know what that could be. To answer the question, should you come back and play Halo Infinite right now? Should you give the game yet another chance? I understand it's a free-to-play game, and you are sacrificing nothing but time instead of money to give the game a shot, but I personally t would want to tell you no. I don't think you should come back. At least not yet. If I had to give a short explanation, I'd say there is still a good amount of hurdles that I still experience with the game that leave me feeling sour from time to time. I'm not completely comfortable recommending this game knowing it still could leave people feeling the same way I do, even if it has improved significantly. Now for the long explanation. Let me explain by clearing the air a bit on my stance on Halo Infinite. As well as how I feel about this push to get Halo Infinite back on people's radar, now, I believe Halo Infinite is in a functional state, and what does that really mean? It means it's not completely broken, it's in a state that might have been considered passable on launch a year and a half ago. While I do enjoy parts of Halo Infinite, specifically the Squad Battle playlist, which is, it's the old BTB format from the older Halo games, it's, I'd say it's the biggest thing I have to praise about the game. We got Infection Mode finally, more maps and modes, Forge Mode and custom games in terms of what is possible is seemingly the best it's ever been. I won't deny the game has content now and has improved, it's just not enough for a game that is nearly two years old now. There is still just so much work that needs to be done, a lot of issues to be resolved, and it's not like the muddied waters have just cleared up all of a sudden. Cross-core customization, removing the FOMO from event battle passes and cosmetics, an actual avenue to earn those overpriced cosmetics from the shop. Unique ranked mode rewards, picking your own game modes, campaign DLC because we tend to forget the campaign exists and needs a lot of attention right now. We are still missing firefight or some type of PvE mode which I hear is coming in season 5 or 6. I, I don't want to hype it up. I'm waiting to see its implementation first before I even say anything about that. I'm not going to continue on and name everything the game still needs. This is just to list a few. It's why I'm not entirely on board with the idea of being extremely nice to Halo Infinite and and encouraging people to give the game another shot, at least not yet. I can understand why and where the confidence in the game is coming from. The Steam charts are going up as opposed to going down, but I wouldn't say it's a big deal or cause for celebration. You got some popular streamers enjoying the game and some content creators coming back and appreciating the game now compared to launch day. That's fine and everything. I'm not saying you can't throw out a recommendation for the game. I just feel it's too soon. I'd rather make that video encourage people to come back when the game is in the best state it can be or at least close to that i uh, like i like i don't want to encourage jimmy over here who quit because he couldn't pick his own game modes and hated getting like oddball or capture the flag only to come back and find that's still an issue and potentially just uninstall the game yet again i mean yeah uh, he, he might enjoy the custom games now sure but who, who's to say he won't want to engage with the progression system and lead him to finding out that career ranks are pointless, you don't get anything for them, and they don't even display on the scoreboard when you're in a match. Point being, the game needs more time. I want to give the game more time. I want to give the developers more time to win me over. It's why I said in one of my previous videos, I want to see more elongated consistency before I start praising the game outright without some level of spite. And here's another one. We gotta talk about the muddied waters. I, I really don't believe anyone is still in the wrong for holding a grudge against the game. Some people are still going to be annoyed with most of the good cosmetics 
cosmetics being locked behind a shop, that issue still exists today. I'm still personally annoyed that some Reach cosmetics are still in the shop despite getting 130 tiers in the form of battle passes dedicated to Halo Reach. It's, it's kind of absurd when you think about it. The confetti party effect, I'd say it's a staple in Halo and one of my personal favorites. Why is it vaulted and no longer earnable? Again, not going to list everything, but this is just a couple quarrels people might still have. People want a progression system and customization that feels good, especially to a franchise that you to be that way which is a huge deal for many people like if this was some different game if this wasn't halo i personally don't think many people would care because it is halo people care and believe it or not people enjoy a fun good progression system people enjoy playing towards and working towards something to unlock then we got the issue of time when the franchise and specifically this game gets left in the gutter for so long don't be surprised if you see people still pissed off if you think about it the game is now getting consistent updates i mean congratulations you are a live service game now after not being one for over a year and a half i wouldn't say a couple months of good consistent updates would just wash away the bad taste in people's mouths. It's not unreasonable to look at changes like BTB has more balanced vehicle drops, infection mode is in the game now, and say should have been there on launch. Imagine if they do something wild and add split screen co-op like just crazy. They add split screen co-op to the game. Why would you expect that to just please everyone? Especially after being told it was coming for years before release. Now some may disagree and say this would have been the greatest Halo game if it launched like this and we should be more hopeful for the game's future. I think I can understand why people feel this way. I think a lot of people are just happy to have a quote-unquote decent Halo game. I just have to respectfully disagree. On top of everything I already mentioned, I want to point out it's easy to appear as a really good version of your past self when you were literally being dragged through the sewers on a daily basis not too long ago. I'm referring to Halo Infinite of course. Uh, saying things like the game has improved slash another W for Halo Infinite, it, it doesn't mean much. You might as well just tell me the game is almost a complete game. And if you're a Halo fan, you are probably no stranger to that feeling of being battered and bruised to the point of insanity, wondering if Halo will ever reach those heights it used to easily reach. I mean, I'm just assuming. I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that unless you were a fan of Halo 4, 5, and the first half of a decade of Halo MCC and of course Halo Infinite launch. Should I even mention the Halo TV show? Not sure if it counts because we are talking about video games but it's not entirely unrelated. Anyway now we have a game that isn't completely in shambles but still very rough around the edges and seemingly is going to start getting better from here on out. I understand wanting to feel hopeful for Halo Infinite but like I said before I'd rather wait before I start rolling out the red carpet until most if not all these issues are resolved. Now you don't have to listen to me, you can go out and try the game yourself right now if you want, I more or less just wanted to share my point of view. As much as I want to tell you to come and play the game, I can't do that yet. I'm not confident in Halo Infinite, but I would like to be. I'm not really sure if anyone can change my mind about how I feel. It's pretty much on the developers to change my stance on Halo Infinite, I really do wish them the best because Halo deserves to be good again. So I hope I've cleared the air enough. I dialed back my spite a little bit for this video. I enjoy being critical of games. I do like Halo and I do want the game to succeed. I think a lot of people tend to forget most people who are negative about not just things in general but Halo to this day also want the game to be good. Well, I mean, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt at least. If you're enjoying Halo, good for you. I'm not going to encourage you to stop, and at the moment, I won't encourage you to play it either. If you care enough to let me know what you think, go ahead, go for it. The comments are open. I'm always curious to hear other people's point of view. Maybe you find yourself agreeing with me. Maybe you disagree or absolutely hated what I had to say. That's okay. Maybe you are that person who didn't listen to what I had to say or misunderstood me and my intentions and just want to tell me things like stop being mad or it's free to play stop complaining if you're that person and somehow managed to make your way this far i really only have one thing to say to you no no i don't think i will